Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Self-Published Success, a show that highlights forward-thinking authors who chose self-publishing over traditional and found success in doing so. My name is John Feldman, founder and CEO of Visionary Literary, and your host for today's show. We have a unique episode for you today. We do not have a guest. Instead, what we have is a a special update, a report on an ongoing trial that you may or may not be aware of, but us in the publishing industry are on top of this case, and it's something that we find very intriguing, and we wanted to bring it to you, tell you a bit what it what, what it's about, what's going on, and also some staggering statistics that we have pulled from the ongoing events. So the event that's taking place is a potential merger between Penguin Random House and Simon & Schuster. Simon & Schuster, which is owned by Paramount Global, previously Viacom CBS, previously CBS Corporation. So within the traditional publishing realm, there are what's called the Big Five Publishing Houses. They are Penguin Random House, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan Press, Hatchet Book Group, and HarperCollins. So they are the big five traditional publishing houses. They have the most money, the best authors, they can give the highest advanced payments, right? So they attract most of the traditionally published authors. There are other traditional publishers, just not to the status of these five. So what's happening is that Penguin Random House and Simon Schuster are attempting to merge. Um, And I say merge in air quotes because it's really Penguin Random House trying to buy Simon & Schuster. And that's something that's one of the key points that I'll get into um, here in a bit is the price and the reasoning for the sale. But what's happening is that the Department of Justice is now stepping in and trying to block the merger from taking place for fear that it will cause a monopoly. So, for instance, Macmillan, who is the next biggest publisher behind these two, their CEO has said that book prices and royalty rates will be affected if this merger goes through because there will now not be the big five, they will be considered the big four with fewer competition. There's less of a need to drive up advances for authors, and this will hurt authors in the long run, as well as book sales and the industry as a whole. This has everyone in the traditional publishing realm up in arms, uh, including Stephen King, who was published by Simon & Schuster, who took the stand at the trial recently. So there are three staggering stats that I want to share with everyone today. Before I get into those, I have to mention here that everyone does seem to be up in arms inside the traditional publishing um, industry, and I'm not really sure why, because this happened in 2013. Uh, Nine years ago, Penguin and Random House were separate houses, and they were number one, numbers one and two inside the big six, it was considered. And they merged, and I remember that vividly because there was an ongoing joke as the merger was taking place, wondering if they would call themselves Random Penguin House, because that would have led to a pretty funny new logo being created. Unfortunately, they didn't. They're Penguin Random House, uh, but they're still number one in the industry. So nine years later, here they are trying to buy another number two in the industry to, again, assert their dominance. So the staggering stats that I mentioned, the first one, uh, as I was, as I follow along with this trial, with this ongoing event, one thing that I came across was the, a number for the average full-time author salary or what, what an average full-time author, traditionally published author makes per year off of their book sales, their contracts, their advances. So the average full-time author traditionally published makes $20,300 $20,300 per year. That's according to an Authors Guild survey. So this was a stat that Stephen King brought to the stand with him when he did take that stand. So for anyone who isn't sure of how most contracts work with traditional publishing, traditional publishing, you one, you need to come to the table with a 
a literary agent you need to find first. You cannot reach out and pitch a traditional publisher on your own. You can't solicit is what they call it. So first thing you have to do as an aspiring author, as a first time author, is you need to get a literary agent who can reach out to contacts inside of a traditional publisher to see if the publishing house has any interest in publishing your book, right? So as an author, the first step you need to do is to start reaching out to literary agents. You have to find them online, do some research. I mean, obviously Google makes it very easy and there are other software tools that make it easier, but you need to send query letters, you know, one to three page sales letters to reach out, at, send samples, find a literary agent that believes enough in your work that they think they can sell the idea to a traditional publisher. That process can take anywhere from a few months to a few years. Once you have a literary agent on your team, that's when they can start to reach out to the traditional publishers. If you capture their attention, what happens is you get a contract with a publisher, they give you an advance, right? So for for instance, we'll use the $20,000 mark because that's what the average full-time author makes per year, right? So Say you get a literary agent and they are able to get you a contract with one of these big five publishing houses and the publishing house says, we'll give you a $20,000 advance on your book before you even start to write it, right? Here's $20,000 based on your idea. You go ahead and write it. We'll take care of everything else, the editing and so forth. So you have $20,000 now. You have to write your book. You have to keep up with deadlines, etc., etc. After that $20,000, after the book is is released, you still owe the publisher that $20,000, right? So it's a book advance. It's not a payment. So the first, until the publisher recoups that $20,000 from book sales, you don't see anything in royalties. Most authors say they don't see anything after their advance because traditional publishers, they do put a lot of work into research and they know pretty accurately how many books will sell based on your genre your current audience, you know, your social media following, anything that you have. So that's where these these advanced numbers come from. They don't come just, they don't pull them from thin air. Um, they're not pulled from thin air. They are calculated. As a side note here, I know I've mentioned this in previous episodes, but New York Times bestsellers are bought. Publishers can afford to, to buy 10, 15, 20,000 copies of a book up front. And that's what puts the, the book on a bestseller list. If they're confident enough that they can sell those 20,000 copies that they print, they will do so. That author will become a New York Times bestseller. And over time, those 20,000 copies will be sold. So that's something that in self-publishing would be very hard to do unless you are a business owner with that kind of cash sitting around and you would like to you know, pay for 20,000 copies up front, then you can get yourself right in line there with the, the traditionally published New York Times bestsellers. Although... It has happened before where independent, independently published authors have hit the New York Times bestseller list and traditional publishing houses threw a fit. It happened a few years ago with a fantasy author. Uh, it was a woman who, a young woman who wrote a book. She got herself on the New York Times bestseller list and it ended up being revoked because the houses threw such a fit that she had to be taken off of that list. Disruption, for sure, and they fear disruption. So that's something that we can we'll get into on staggering topic number three. But first, staggering topic number two. Staggering topic number one, again, full-time author only makes $20,000, traditionally published. Staggering stat number two, proof that traditional publishing doesn't guarantee success. So one thing that people assume is that self-publishing is a toss-up, right? Self-publishing, you can sell one copy, you can sell 40,000 copies, who knows? Most people think that traditional publishing, yes, I've made it. I've made it. I'm a, tra- I'm a traditionally published author. I am successful. Well, as the number, you know, $20,000 per year told us before, that doesn't mean that you are going to be successful. Traditional publishing isn't the way, it, it doesn't operate the way that it did in 1980 or 1990. Being a traditionally published author doesn't mean you get that nationwide book tour. Doesn't mean you're going to be on MSNBC and the morning show uh, promoting your book. That's not the way it works. For for big time authors, maybe, right? For Stephen King, Gillian Flynn, right? Colleen Hoover, for them, yes. 
the money is well spent because they are big time authors and the publishing house knows they'll get it back. For smaller authors, that money will not be spent on PR because the, again, the house doesn't know if they will get that money back, if they'll recoup it, and they don't want to operate at a loss. Again, they can't. They're a business. So today, the way that traditional publishers, when you when you send out pitch letters to them, one of the main things that they're looking at, other than your your book, your idea, and whether it's comparable titles and so forth, the main thing they want to see is your social media following. If you have 30,000, 40,000 70,000 followers on Instagram, you have a much better chance than someone who approaches them with 200 followers. It's just the way it works. It could be the exact same title, exact same idea, but they want their guaranteed money. All right, so that's what we tell authors that come to us is that if you already did the work to attain 70,000 Instagram followers, then why would you share profits with another company when you don't have to? So on that note, the Penguin Random House CEO said this, and this is quoted in one of the articles. We invest every year in thousands of ideas and dreams, and only a few of them make it to the top. Each book is unique, and there is a lot of risk. So again, if you are an aspiring author and you go through the work of building your audience and then getting a literary agent and then getting that That book deal, which is a big deal because so few authors are able to get book deals with traditional publishing houses. If you get that book deal, you go through all that work, you're still not guaranteed success, nor are you guaranteed placement in bookstores. Again, so these traditional publishers have sales representatives for their books. And those sales reps each quarter go to go to the major retailers, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and they try to pitch that book, that title, to be on their shelves. And not every book gets to be on a shelf. So you can be a traditionally published author and still not have a book on a bookshelf in Barnes & Noble. I'll compare that to a self-published author who goes through the distribution channels that we can set them up with that that are available to self-published authors now. And you can get your, your book into bookstores. You can be your own sales rep. You can hire your own sales rep. There are ways in which you can reach out. You can be in airport bookstores, in Barnes & Noble, in local bookstores if you want. You can be, you, you have those options as a self-published author. And again, traditional publishing does not guarantee you shelf space on a bookshelf in a major retailer. Again, everything is about book sales. It's about analytics. It's about the research that the traditional publishing houses put into how many book sales they think your book will sell. And this brings me to a point that I actually I forgot to mention here, but maybe we'll call it staggering statistic number 2.5. And this is that traditional publishing houses use Amazon as a way to research their book sales. Penguin Random House CEO Marcus Dole said that they pay Amazon money for research to see what kind of sales they can get. Right, so the Amazon that has created... Kindle Direct Publishing, CreateSpace before it went into Kindle Direct Publishing, but that Amazon that has done everything to help the independently published author get their books professionally made, distributed, and sold throughout the world is being utilized by traditional publishers for research. That's just proof that the independent slash self-publishing model is becoming more effective than the traditional model. Okay, so the third staggering statistic to come from this event is that this sale was actually initiated in November of 2020, right? So it was not initiated, it was agreed upon in 2020. So Paramount agreed to sell, Paramount is the the owner of Simon & Schuster, agreed to sell Simon & Schuster to Penguin Random House for $2.175 billion. Yeah, it's a big sale, but remember, Simon & Schuster is the number two publisher in the world behind Penguin Random House. The one staggering stat here is that Paramount, CBS, agreed to this price, to this sale, for $2.175 billion in cash. Now, what does that mean? For anyone who isn't familiar with business mergers or business acquisitions, many business mergers result in a mixture of cash and stock or equity, right? So 
say this was a $2.175 billion sale, typically with a merger or an acquisition of a company, the company being acquired still believes in the value of their company and what the new the new purchasing company can do. Otherwise, why would they sell to the company? But so so they want stock in the company as well. So maybe for this instance, we'll say Paramount says, yes, Penguin Random House, we will sell you Simon & Schuster, but we want $1.175 billion in cash and $1 billion in stock. All right, so just say whatever the stock price is for Penguin Random House, the share price, whether it's private or public, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be on the stock exchange. Um, $1 million in equity in the company, right? So what this does for Paramount is if Penguin Random House purchases Simon & Schuster, and the company just takes off, sales skyrocket. Paramount doesn't have to sit back and think, oh man, we really missed out on that. They still have $1 billion in equity in the company. And as the company grows, so does that equity, right? So both sides win. And that's why this staggering stat number three is that the sale was agreed upon for $2.175 billion in cash. What Paramount is saying is we want to wipe our hands clean of Simon & Schuster you give us the cash, you take the company. We're done. So what does that mean? Right, does that mean that Paramount knows something that we don't? They're okay with getting rid of the company for pure cash? Do they not believe in the traditional model anymore? Do they not believe in the company that they acquired? Simon & Schuster wasn't founded by Paramount or CBS. They were acquired. So that was staggering to me, again. The all-cash sale, good for Paramount, or is it? All right, three staggering statistics about the acquisition. Again, the fact that full-time traditionally published authors make $20,300 per year is very staggering. Number two, proof that you know traditional publishing doesn't guarantee success. Penguin Random House CEO said that we invest... Every year, thousands of ideas and dreams, and only a few of them make it to the top. Each book is unique, and there's a lot of risk. So going through that work of getting into a traditional publishing house does not guarantee success. And then number three, the fact that the sale is for pure cash makes my canine ears go up and makes me wonder why Paramount wants out of Simon & Schuster. So final thought here. My thought is let them merge. The Department of Justice is trying to jump in. Everyone is up in arms saying that this is going to be bad for business. My opinion here, and again, I am in the independent independent publishing world. Um, I I see. I've been for over a decade. I've been writing. I've been. Tr- I, when I first started, I tried desperately to get my foot into the door with the traditional publishing house. I spent years, years querying sending pitch letters to literary agents, publishers, any anywhere I could just kind of get my foot in the door and work my way up. Um, never could get through any of those barriers, so I went the independent, independent publish, self-published route. And since then, all thanks to companies like Ingram Spark and Amazon, self-publishing has just taken on a world of its own, and it's just really gone, gone up. Um, so again, my thoughts here, let them merge. They are desperate, and they're trying to come together now before the entire traditional business model is eliminated. I say that in the nicest way possible. I don't wish death to traditional publishing. I don't wish, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Okay, there are humans involved, families, livelihoods. I do not want, and and, and competition for us as well, right? Self-publishing needs traditional publishing as a balance. That's the reason that this whole event is ongoing is because we want balance. We need competition. You cannot have a monopoly. So I do want the traditional model to continue. However, I, I, they need to adjust their model if things are going to continue and if they are going to, to survive and stay afloat. So it's not too late. Again, I believe independent and self-publishing is the new norm. Traditional model still can have a space here, but this has been a a very interesting and still ongoing event inside of our industry, inside of our world. Staggering statistics really caught my eye and I just figured I would share them with all of you. Again, self-publishing success is what we are catering toward. Thank you for listening in for 
being intrigued and interested in what's happening in this world of traditional publishing. If you have thoughts, if you've been paying attention to this ongoing event as well, this trial, reach out to us, talk to us, start a conversation over on, on LinkedIn or, or on Instagram at Visionary Literary or on Twitter at Visionary Lit. We want to hear from all of you, self-published or traditionally published, any writer, aspiring writer, author, literary agent, publisher, talk to us. Let's, let's keep this conversation ongoing as this trial continues. Thank you again for listening in to the Self-Published Success Show, and we will see you next time.